Yo! All gone, you lot, yeah. Mass of Ray back again with another one, innit? Yeah. Today, following up from my man, what's my brother? Uh, Vigilante, the prophet, yeah, his team. Finding out that my man's a killer bee. Man literally went back and went on this uh, uh, Killer Bees little documentary thing that I was pre before. So we're gonna get straight in this one, innit? Yeah. Killer Bees, Bees Sting <laughs> documentary, you get me? The dramatic end to a shootout in South Auckland. Oh, uh, the quality is so bad, I apologize, innit? But this is the only one man could find, innit? 240, bro, we're doing 240. In 2021, some dickhead thing. Gang warfare the police top brass don't want to talk about. Naming gangs, they say, only helps gang recruiting. Is that right? That's it. But off camera, we're told that oh, tomate. one gang that's an emerging threat on their radar. Saturday hip hop in a central Auckland park supported by Youth Town and a local radio station. Man, the music the place is swarming with auto the gang killer bees. Killer bees. Even Josh Masters signing autographs. Some would say recruiting wannabe gangsters. Yeah. This DVD, put your colours on, is the public face of the gang. It's had more than 80,000 hits on YouTube. Killer bees are a direct copy of LA gangsters. They wear colours and bling and sing about how hard. Come on. And now Josh Masters has a growing uh, profile as a kickboxing rapper called Gravity. Right, kick, kickboxing rapper. He sings about being a gangster and a hustler. But is he? I mean, here's a guy um, who's clearly got a bit of form. He's a large, imposing man. I mean, he's a genuine gangster. Um, <coughs> and genuine everybody gangster. something to look up to. I mean, until a lot of these youths. I guess Josh Masters is, you know, a gang messiah. He's, you know, he's it. A lot of people would see you as a, a bunch of gangsters. Would that be a fair description? Um, no, not really. Not really. Not really. So why then has the Killer Bees got a reputation for things like aggravated assault and robbery and drug dealing and those, those sorts of things? There's been no convictions or that. No convictions of the Killer Bees. <laughs> really like so that. you deny anyone that suggested that that's what you're into. Yeah. <laughs> Street feet. Street feet. Well, the word here on the streets of Otara is that the Killer Bees. Yeah, are Otara. That's what my man was repping. Okay. Killer bees are on the Otara thing. They're man from Otara, yeah. Much an organised crime gang, not just here locally, but across Auckland and increasingly further afield. How long have the Killer bees been active? Like, let me know. Yeah, let me know when. How long they've been active for? So I'm off to the Manukau court to find out just what Josh Masters and the Killer Bees have been up to. Josh Masters! I found Josh Masters has a long list of convictions, oh, many man. for violence. In 2004, he was sentenced to two and a half years in prison for assault, assault with intent to injure, <laughs> possession of an offensive weapon, uh -huh. attempting to defeat the course of justice, and threatening to kill. Shit, man. Have you ever done time in prison? Uh, yeah, that's inside. What did you do in time in prison for? Um, I'm labelled as a violent offender. I was labelled as a violent offender. Yeah. Do you think you've turned your life around then? Yes. Not, yeah. Yes, by the help of people opening up doors for me. I opened up the door and let me show my talent to New Zealand. So Josh Masters is telling us he's like the leopard who's changed his spots. He says, he's <laughs> "Ah, this lad trying to give it to him, fam. Man, man, giving him no faith. Man, said the leopard, the changed his spot, fam. The sarcasm in there is immense." Opposed to street violence, and yet Josh Masters has been involved in some very nasty violence in this street around four years ago. He led a group of twenty killer bees armed with sledgehammers, golf clubs, Damn. and sticks. In an attack on a family home. Damn, he hit a son. man with a hockey stick in the head as he was protecting some children. He fractured his jaw, put him in hospital for two weeks. Damn. And the reason for the attack? What? Well, the man's niece had complained about noise coming from the killer bee's house. Right, like that. To be hot. Man came over and swung a man with a fucking hockey stick just because of the noise complaint. Yeah. Moving brazy. Materialistic, hot and violent. And while we've had violence in the past, 
often it's been just about showing how staunch you can be in your territory. Staunch. Whereby, add that to the hyper-materialism of these new gangs, and we've got a different type of criminal element. How many dudes you know like this? Jeez, how many dudes you know like this? Uh-huh, not many. How many dudes you know got the skills to rock the mic and do this like this? Oh wait, hold on, I swear I covered these years before, bruv. Oh, that might work kill her bees as well. I remember this documentary. This wait, is it the same one? This can't be the same one. This use was on some matting. Nah, I definitely did a video with these specific youths in there, fam. Yeah, with my man, the little rapper guy. Yeah, you can't rap for shit. I remember you can't rap for shit, bro. This is Speedy, who claims to be second in command of the Killer Bees. Yeah, you want to see the gangster side of me? Yeah, I'm a motherfucking Killer Bees. Speedy guns, what? You all met in me, motherfucking? Yeah, can't rap for shit. The game provides a sense of belonging. Wait, is this the one I've seen before, bro? Excitement. Yeah, every day you see me on the side. Killer Bees are seen largely as a feeder gang um, to the more established. Uh, Definitely seen those youths in another documentary. Something about Auckland's uh, crime wave or something, something. Gang in, in South Auckland, the tribes. Right? The future, really, for, 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 for gangs in this country, youth gangs particularly, is these. And they robbed, man. They robbed the interviewer guy. Yeah, I remember. LA style street gangs, and I think we'll begin to see more and more of the more established gangs um, cozy up to them. And the Killer Bees have close links with the older tribesman motorcycle gang. When Josh Masters was last in court, police claimed he was president of both the Killer Bees and the tribesmen. Are you a pet? Do you know what's interesting to me though, obviously, in here, obviously these men are running things via violence and all of that kind of stuff in it, yeah, but for me, it just reminds me, it me just feels a bit more like it's, it's tribal, in it. obviously, hold on, let's go back a little bit, you see my man and his gang, in it, yeah, this is his bits, this is where he's from, right, and my man has gained power, maybe via his physical, how strong he is, because in the wild, that's how the thing goes, you get me, it's all about how physically dominant you are you feel me so if we take it way back my man's power would be i guess genuine you feel me but now i guess there's laws and enforcements and the idea of keeping everyone in peace and harmony seen as a bad guy but in the wild he is a strong man now of course there's intermediaries in between what's going on do you get me because cool obviously he's causing violence and he's fucking shit up and all that kind of stuff in it here but at the end of the day it's a primal instinct to do so it's a primal instinct to get power to dominate get the women and all of that kind of stuff you get me but obviously we live in a mad tailor society where we don't have to fend for our survival anymore for survival is such a given that now we focus on sort of the long-term preservation of survival it's interesting just an interesting perspective on the whole gang kind of thing you feel me yeah take this guy back and he's just a nigga in power president of both the killer bees and the tribesmen are you a patch member of the tribesmen yeah. well i've been a patchman for a long time yeah and you still are me yeah no, I'm oh, look at these old school tribes man says soldier boy you and they had you got that luggy duggy the kiss 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 right this is old school bro i'm a director business director <laughs> And lately, business has been busy for both the Killer Bees and the Tribesmen. Sunday can now reveal that Tribesmen gang members have been charged after the major shootout in Ottawa last month. How many shots? Four. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? Happened? Why did they say that succinctly? How many shots? Four. Four. Yeah. What do you think happened? Why are they so happy? What the fuck is it? Wait, what the fuck? Is it just me or is she slightly giving me JM vibes? <laughs> I don't know, bro. But she slightly looks like JM's, bro. He's actually mad. Is Tilly House down the road? Yeah, just up the road from us. Cops and everything, they just walk in, budging in. Cops say cats and everything. A shotgun shootout left two gang members in hospital. These Ottawa girls saw what happened after a high-speed chase. 
What makes you think it was a, it within two gangs involved? Because 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 yeah, because we, the way her face was like all bleeding and stuff, and plus, he could hear you, and then cops just started yeah, like rushing in with guns and everything. Armed police sealed off Middlebore, seized two shotguns. These girls say they've seen guns and gangs before. Because you've got to pay your way on your street and plus pay your way in the house. Yeah. And you're supposed to be a drug dealer. So there's guns in the background. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's guns yeah. everywhere, but you've got to know they, yeah. you want to think there is, but there's always guns around. Yeah. Daylight revealed the damage at number nine Othello Drive. Shotgun blast shattered windows. Shotgun roll. Peppered walls. Shotgun roll, kick off your front door, kick off your front door. And at the door. Punch your jaw. This was not your average family home. It was a house for selling drugs. A tinny house. It had been raided Trap by the house. police before. Bando. When we come back, the tenant who says she moved out of the tinny house six months ago. I have a tea this house. This is uh, broken by gunfire. And the landlord who says he didn't know his house was being used to sell drugs. As a tea house. It now, it's obviously uh, being stood over by the gang. It's been forced out of our house. And the gang members in court. Do not normalise gangs. They exist to plague every community through crime, intimidation and in some cases death. There are thousands, if not millions, of gangs already existing in our society. A lot of them wear suits. You feel me? That's why I was saying what I was saying earlier about my man and getting his power. This motherfucker is part of a gang himself. Do you get it? A gang that maybe is not with overt violence, but they are just as destructive or can be just as destructive. You feel me? These motherfuckers are just gangs in plain clothing basic disguise and they're even worse because obviously with these with the other gangs in it yeah you know what a gang brother look like you get me these men are trying to pull the wool over your eye by looking safe you get me but these men are just as big a gang as all of the other gms and that you feel me disclaimer not to flip in vilify this brother or anyone you get me i'm just saying as a general consensus you feel me innit? Yeah, uh, Thousands and thousands of gangs already in existence in your everyday society. Everyday trap line ring, First, everyday trap line bling. I stepped up in every kitchen. And now it's been set alight. Totally destroyed by fire, accelerant appears to have been used in three of the rooms here. Bruh, the geez. fire service has oh, no. put water all over the place, which has got through all the walls. There's huge holes in the ceiling. This is very much a dead house. But the rent on this house was still being paid through work and income. Oh, I had no reason to go around because the rent was being paid by Wins on Francis' behalf and I presume she was still living there. I moved out last year. Yes. Yeah, I just left the place. I just wanted to get it all done up before I handed it back in. But Francis Moore hadn't told Wins this and so her benefit was still being used to pay the rent while another group, who also appear to have been beneficiaries, moved in to sell drugs. So it appears New Zealand taxpayers have unwittingly been supporting uh -huh. a tinny house here in Altara. What is my calling it? A, a telly house? ...have unwittingly been supporting a tinny house here... A tinny house? Is that what, what the man call it? A tinny house? It's funny, it's still a tea, a tea house, you get me, obviously. Yeah, in Altara. Not the first time that's happened. But what about the shootout? Well, that appears to have been a turf war between the tribesman gang and a former tribesman member over the drug trade. The tribesman gang has a long history. Like, obviously, in it, yeah, I look at this, I, I try to look at all of this kind of stuff in it, yeah, quite not just as what they're presenting it is presenting to me as well in it yeah, but obviously quite opposite as well you feel me like it's obvious what the mo behind this documentary is in it the gangs are bad they're doing da -da 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 -da. cool man understand the man gets that you feel me but then i look at the people reporting on it and sort of what they think they're doing and then what institution they're coming from and what that institution represents and its objective and whatnot you feel me and it just gives man a wider broader outlook on the whole thing you feel me and I feel like that's how you should watch documentaries or TV and all of that kind of stuff, you feel me? Because it's obvious their objective and what they're trying to do, you feel me? But when you take it another level back, you can see more of what's really going on, you get me? 
Well, yeah, hope I'm making sense. Free of drug dealing and violence. Back in 1999, the police seized from the tribesmen drugs, more than cash. half a million dollars in cash, along with a variety of firearms, motorcycles, and a boat. One of the tribesmen arrested in this operation left the gang and has since been running the tinny houses in Ōtara, including Nine Othello Drive. That really and truly, innit? I'm just thinking, that really, like, is there such a thing as peace? You know this peace that they subscribe to you, innit? Yeah, and try to say this is what we're working towards and all of that kind of stuff. Really and truly, is there a thing? Because the peace they want you to subscribe to is a peace that relinquishes your human freedoms and human rights, you feel me, to conform into this idea of a societal system you feel me which i get it in it yeah as an idea is ideal but in life things don't really tend to work out that ideal because of all the different factors in play in all of this kind of stuff you feel me so for a man born in this area or location born into this kind of lifestyle building his way up to get drugs to sell and da -da 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 -da, to even get the tea house and all of that kind of stuff because imagine these men are moving drugs they have weapons for protection and whatnot. Like, this is this is high-level stuff. Like, you get me? Like, you need a lot of heart and a lot of dedication and devotion to go out and do these things. You feel me? And these are the motherfuckers who are actually... They're actually doing it and making it work and they're making peace from it and they're... Do you get me? Obviously, like, they're doing bad stuff, quote-unquote bad stuff to do it and whatnot. But these men are hustling, bro. They're hustling themselves out of the shitness of their situation which i understand to the extent that what they the shit what they're doing is kind of a shitness in itself but the brothers are surviving do you get it is the current tribesmen are determined to push him out well the supposition has been that the tribesmen are trying to drive stuff boys out of town close down the tinny house you think that's a fair supposition? Almost for sure. Yeah. That, like, oh, that, that, that. You just wait and see what happens in court, perhaps? Cool. The Lamborghini. No. Oh, the I don't know nothing about that. Oh, oh, I'm gonna get oh, fuck you know, I'm gonna get a strike. I'm gonna get a copyright strike, you stupid bastards. Oh uh school friend of mine. Uh, 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 I might have to mute this. And I'm not happy with that. Is that Agostino? Tribesman Agostino Tai was in court again this week on a charge relating to the Othello Drive shooting. A suppression order means we can't show you his face. But he's lost the sight and one eye as a result of a shotgun blast. Bruh. Killer B and Tribesman Business Director Josh Masters was... <laughs> uh, what Killer B and Tribesman Business Director, what a title. ...also in court to support his fellow tribesmen who'd been in the firing line. The Othello Drive shooting is of real concern to the authorities. They've finally been getting on top of street violence in South Auckland. Jason, do you want to rest, bro? I'll give us a break while we're drinking. Yep. Fifteen months ago, Sunday reported the formation of three new policing units, juvenile tactical teams, following nine murders involving South Auckland street gangs. You're in a race, The government's pumped millions into social programs, and many of the gangster wannabes have moved on. But the killer bees have got bigger and more mobile. To this point, the last of street gangs in New Zealand tend to come and go quite quickly with the personalities of their leaders. This one looks as though it may stick around. And the bees have been buzzing well beyond Otara. Last month, a series of random late-night assaults on Auckland's North Shore put two couples in hospital. It's just sick. Man, you can't even, can't even walk home anymore. Four young North Shore men are facing serious charges relating to the beatings. Police intelligence sources have told Sunday at least one of them has a close relationship with members of the Killer Bees. The Killer Bees are also being blamed for serious New Year's Eve assaults in the Bay of Islands. And hi here at Christmas time, a couple of people in... Like, can you really take the animal out of a human being? the animalistic instinct for survival can you really take that out of a human being these men have been hunted for the violence and all of that that they're doing but i'm sure that comes from somewhere whether it be depravity poverty uh, 
uh, fucked up community, fucked up upbringing or whatnot. But really and truly, innit, we all really come from nothing, really and truly. If we're coming from the wild to then the civilised society, innit, yeah? Like, if you look at the wild, innit, yeah? Them motherfuckers, they, they ain't shit. A lot of scumbaggery goes on in the wild, you feel me? And if we come from that, then we was at one stage and now we're at one stage where we have to grow, you feel me? And then those people here are then trying to police the people who are still here and yet to make that growth, you know? But rather than policing them in a way that allows them to grow, to get to here, they're punishing them and trying to suppress them for being down here at, say, let's say level one. You feel me? They're yet to reach level 10. So now level 10 motherfuckers are sending level 10 niggas to go now and shut down the level ones and lock them up and fuck them up and tell them to fuck off and stop being pricks rather than helping them to elevate to becoming a level 10 don the camping ground up there were assaulted rather badly by killer bees true uh, uh, what about the north shore is, is there a connection there with those serious assaults no. with killer bees? Yeah. they are unfortunately i think a more menacing form of an older reality one man who's been making the connection between the killer bees and violence in the far north is cabinet minister shane jones he strongly objected to the presence of oh. tribesmen at Waitangi this year. Sorry, guys. The reality is that the killer bees are associated with the tribesmen. Whether or not they're a feeder group or a breakaway group, uh, they exist for one purpose, which is to enrich themselves through crime. And if people get in the way, those people are going to get seriously hurt. But people, you know, they look at the tribesmen, they've been busted for drugs and assault and murder and manslaughter in the past, and they think, well, you know, these, these killer bees can't be up to much good either. Well, that's what you want. Oh, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get copyright so bad. Young kids are gonna be clean living and gonna be honest like young Sid. They're gonna be honest like myself. They're gonna be New Zealand champions like myself. They're gonna be businesses, businessmen like myself. Yeah. They have quite a sophisticated system of recruiting members. Uh, they've gone for the apparel and the accoutrements that we associate with American gangsterism, CDs, rap music, etc. And they're just a new form of an old play. Massive. We have the social conditions whereby which gangs will flourish. If you put certain ingredients into an oven, you're going to come out with a cake. Now we have that in New Zealand for gang membership, so we can't be surprised by it. it happens all around the world in, other, in similar conditions. We like to steal cars. We like to um, keep in control of other people. The ingredients in that cake, poverty, family dysfunction, little education. With nothing else going on, why wouldn't you join the killer bees? Mm. Gang membership may in fact be a perfectly rational choice for a lot of people. Joining the gang may in fact be the best thing. No, and it's all real sense. Killer bees. Boom. All right, cool. See, my thing is, in it, yeah, is is way too easy for a man to instantly look at gang members, in it, yeah, and vilify them and saying you're piece, they're pieces of shit and they're this and they're that and da 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 da. But we've been doing that for the longest time. You feel me, yeah? But to look at them as human beings, in it, yeah, and the fact that nothing happens or comes to be without reason, yeah, makes me always perceive the other side to them you feel me like they were saying people join gangs and all of that kind of stuff because of dysfunction at home because of this and that and da, 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 da. so really and truly what that means is that the people in these gangs that are doing these vile rubbish shit things yeah are just motherfuckers in need of help they're in need of help not punishment help but a lot of the times the solution seems to be let's Lock them up, fuck them up, chuck them up, and and yeah, put them in a corner so that we don't see them and everything will be good. But that will never be the case because there are millions and millions of other people in that same situation who are gonna come about and get the same result. Like my man says, like a kick. You've got the ingredients, the poverty, the home, the dysfunctional home, all of that. They're continuing to pop up. So you're just fighting an everlasting war as long as people are continuing to be brought up in that environment whereas to actually take them re rehabilitate them or even show them another side of life especially you motherfuckers with a lot of money you can't yeah living such an amazing life 
chatting down from your level 10 place, talking down on these level 1 motherfuckers, sending your armies and your troops and chaining them to go beat up and fuck up these motherfuckers, in it, yeah? You with so much money, why not you? If you really want to stop the problem, why not invest the money in helping support and rehabilitate these people? Because at the end of the day, we're all human beings. One plus one is two. You feel me? Bad environment, no options, equals gangs or poverty or... Do you know what I mean? Like, it, it, it makes sense as to why these lot are where they are. You feel me? And the solution to just locking them up isn't really going to do much. You feel me? Large up the killer bees. Yeah, you done them, done them, see. Yeah. Who this? No one, really, no one recommended this. I was going to shout out a recommendation, but cool. That's it for me still. Listen, man, I'll see you guys on the next video, yeah? Make sure you bust the like button, yeah? Bust the subscribe team. Make sure you at least bust the like button, you get me in it, yeah? And boom, man, I'll see you guys on the next video because someone is blowing up my shit right now. Bless.